Hey guys, some gamer dude here. So I haven't had a chance to actually play the Final Fantasy trading card game yet. Bastard of a heat wave here. 40 degrees nearly every single day. And two consecutive Sundays in a row. Ugh, this heat. I don't really want to go out in it. Putting all card games on hold. But after reading up the a lot of the cards on Bognet, I started I did want a 13 deck. And lo and behold, next time I went out, saw that I had the Final Fantasy X ones. No longer had the seven one that I left, but it had what I assumed to be two boxes of Final Fantasy XIII decks. So I picked it up. Uh, when I was reading through the cards, I started to really like the idea of lightning the element, not the character, uh, because it started to really resemble a red-black deck for magic. It's speedy, but it's got a lot of instant kills. As you know, I like black and magic. I like black and blue the most. And ice is the other part of uh, both black and blue. It's got components of both. Uh, same info on the back, basically. The only difference is the title and the color. Uh, as for 13 itself, I know it's not the most well-loved game, but, and I'm not going to risk my neck for it, but I did like it for what it was trying to do. I think people take the idea that it's linear too far because nearly all JRPGs, especially nowadays, really, really are. Using power levels of monsters to curb you into a specific direction is pretty much the exact same thing as putting you on the one direction unless you can somehow sequence break through extreme grinding or what you can do in Final Fantasy VIII. I enjoy the characters. I think uh, Snow and Fang were probably my favourites. But you're not here to listen to me talk about Final Fantasy X. We're here to look... Oh, sorry, 13. We're here to look at the cards. Yep. Yep, exact same as before. Actually, I might take a look at the back I neglected to look at last time in this one because, well, I don't see buying the 7 deck ever. But it, it's just not my game style. Yep, exact same. Exact same. So let's just pop open the cards and take a look. I am quite looking forward to it. I think it's probably going to be... My replacement for Force of Will, because I really don't like where that went after a while. Um, I, I just think the power curve for aping magic is a bit too high. So, let's start. There we go. That's the best we're going to do. So, Lightning. Let's move this out of the way. Cost to play Lightning onto the field is reduced by 1 for each 13 character forward you control. Considering she's 6, that's actually really good. Assuming that you just have like 1, 2, 3, you can get her out easy on turn 4. Oh, wait, I'm thinking about magic. I'd want to see in gameplay how long things stay on the board regarding these type of effects that reduce cost. It sounds good in theory, and I'm pretty sure it would be. But we'll see. She also has haste, and when she deals damage to an opponent, choose one forward your opponent controls and dulls it. That actually doesn't sound that great, mostly because the opponent only has, what, seven damage to take. Her getting through is, they're not really going to want it. But, low cost, uh, theoretically, decent power, haste, she's going to be doing a lot. And she has nice heart. I, I like the action pose. I think three because she is a. Oh, jeez, it should be three, but let's stick together. Gilgamesh. From what? 13. I honestly don't remember him being in 13. Oh, I think he's one of the side things. Uh, forward. I'm surprised he's not a summon, to be honest. Uh, four for eight. He cannot be returned. He can't be bounced. That's interesting. Lightning, lightning, and he gains plus 1,000. I, I really think that's over-costed. And pitch a copy of Gilgamesh. 
two to choose one forward and break it. Only if you have... So it's a limit break ability, more or less. Well, we are really going into Vanguard type stuff here. I mean, it's not a bad ability. It's a very good ability. It's just like... Jesus, let's kind of stick together. But... Probably the heat. Uh, yeah, it's not a bad ability. I, I could see using it. Well costed. No! Yeah, there's a character from a game I didn't like. Yeah, can't say the same... Uh, is that a like 13 for what it was? Can't say I like 13 too. Still haven't played Lightning Returns. Haste, if you control Sarah, it goes up to 7,000 for 3. Probably 3 for 5 because of haste, I guess. But 3 for 7 is average, so... Yeah, these cards are a little bit stuck together. Macwe, I think that's pronounced. I really don't remember because the character is that inconsequential. Backup, tap and lightning, so it costs, it costs two. Uh, choose one attacking lightning forward, it gains first strike. That makes lightning really annoying to block. It still costs two because you've got to tap it and play. Pay the lightning. But it's not bad. It's really good. I'm not even going to try to pronounce in, try pronouncing that. Forward, 5,000 for two. That's average from what I've seen. When he enters the field, choose one active forward. Deal it 3,000 damage. When it is put from the field into the break zone this turn, choose one opponent's forward and dull it. That's actually a good two for... I'm not sure what you're going to kill for three. Uh, I... Th yeah, I'm actually really not sure what you're going to kill th for three. Yeah, probably a main phase two type card. But you should always be keep... You, you shouldn't blow your load early anyway for any game. Cast things when you need them, not when you want them. And don't try to be flashy. That's not how you win. Odin. Choose one someone of cost four or less. Break it. I... Mm. It's actually not a breakthrough. I mean, an EX card. That's interesting. It's still an instant, and it's still good. It's a rare from the set. Four for a straight kill of something, four or less. That's actually pretty good. Two of that. Sage. When Sage enters the field, choose one character card in your break zone, add it to your own. That's good uh, retrieval. That is good retrieval. And she can have multiple out. Coming from the set? Yep. Summoner. Yep, that, that is a thing. That is a thing you'd probably pitch. I, I don't get the idea of um, one cost ones. It's like I tap it to put another one out. It's like turn one, it's useless. You have to pitch to bring one out and you'd waste a crystal CP point. I mean, I, I do get it. Tap, place another one. There you go, two. But wouldn't you want to do something a bit more meaningful. Mm. Magus. Actually, the whole mana system thing in this, I, I really want to see it in action before I judge it completely. When he enters the field, choose one forward, deal it 5,000 damage. That will kill a lot of weenies. I like that. That, that. that is good. And you can have multiple out. That's good too. Dragoon. First strike. Three for six. That, that, that's all it does. It's first strike. Sid Reigns. Actually, that, that isn't bad, though, for strike. But you'd want to juice it up. I think the Lulu um, backup from the set will boost her up. Sid Reigns. Now, I do remember him being quite an enjoyable boss in the game. do like the combat system in 13. Ah, when Sid Reigns enters the field, dull one of opponents, forwards deal at 4,000 damage. And if it dies to it, no, if it just dies this turn, your opponent discards one card from their hand. That's got some good multi-use abilities. It's like, I don't want that to be able to block. I want that to die. I want you to discard a card from your hand. That's actually rather useful to me, at least in my eyes. Three of those because it's a... 
starter card. This, she's the first EX burst one we've got. Ah, oh, when she enters the field, choose two forwards and freeze them. That is tap and they can't stand up during the next upkeep phase. I mean, uh, restore phase. That is actually really, really good. Oh, and EX burst. I uh, did, didn't explain this properly. I did put annotations. It's when she's flipped up as damage. Regardless of the context of the abilities, uh, when entering whatever, you just do the effect. It's like uh, it's a like she says when enter the, enter the field, ignore all of that. Just choose up to two forwards and freeze them. She can also discard another copy of herself, pay blue, tap herself to choose one forward, to dull it and freeze it. Hmm, that's actually pretty good. So she turns extra copies of herself into a two cost uh, freeze card. That's actually pretty good. Jill, you pass. Snow, everyone's favorite hero from Final Fantasy 13. Because poor Lightning, she doesn't really endear herself to anyone. When he blocks, choose a forward, dull it. So he can prevent more attackers. And he can pitch a copy of himself, pay blue. That's actually not that bad because the other snow is also really good. The one from the set. Uh, until the end of turn, snow gains plus 2000 and first strike. You can only use this ability while snow is blocking. Wow, you can just clear... You, you just put the fear of God into them at that point, it's like... Because you don't have to tap to block. Unlike some other games. So you just put them out, it's like... No. I gotta get up to 11,000 power because I think you may have another snow card in your hand. I'm like, yeah, here's snow. But yeah, I, I like that card. That's actually the one card that actually got me to get the deck because I really like it thematically and mechanically. It's good to me. Sarah, forward. When she enters the field, your opponent discards a card from their hand. Like her. How could you not like that? She's like, I play a card. It's still under my control. You discard a card. So you lose something, but I don't. I mean, there's bluff in the hand, but you're not really losing anything. It's not really card advantage until it's dead. And card disadvantage, I should say. Mog from Final Fantasy 13 2. God, the one from World of Final Fantasy is much cuter. But, God, the Koopo thing is annoying in that game. Back up. When it enters the field, you may search your deck for any 13 forward and add it to your hand. That is good. You are good, Mog. We like you, Mog. Bard. Tap. Uh, back up for two. So that's probably your turn one play. Tap. Blue. And ice. She was kept saying blue, but it's ice. Keep forgetting. Put Bard into the break zone. Your opponent discards. Uh, you, you could probably find uses for it, but it seems rather costly to destroy your... Uh, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Shiva. Choose one forward, dull it, and freeze it. So, freeze just taps, doesn't tap down, but it makes them unable to stand up if they become tapped. So, yeah, that makes Jill a little bit less useful. Uh, EX Burst, three... And I think there's a snow in the set that needs Shiva to have been casted this turn to get the effect. Oh, she's a rare from the set. It's not a bad card by any regard. Because it just fully gets it out of the way for the two turns. I, I like those type of tap down abilities. Summoner. Okay. Dragoon. Send unit. Deal 1000 damage to all forwards your opponent controls. Again with that, I, I want to see the practical applications of that. So, well, there's two different Dark Knights in the deck. And when Dark Knight is put from the field into the break zone, Dark Knight deals you one point of damage. That's why he's an 8 for 3. I actually rather like that thematically. That's pretty cool. Not sure why Dark Knights are ice though. Hmm. Anyway, that was the 13 deck. 
looks pretty enjoyable to me. I think the 10 deck is a little bit more on the interesting side. This one's more straightforward. Uh, from what I've seen of the 7 deck, it's just straight aggro. This has been some Gamma Dude, and I'll see you guys next time.